Hi guys, Josh back again with another book review, and this time I am reviewing Star Wars Moving Target by Cecil Castellucci and Jason Fry. Now, if you haven't read the book and you want to avoid any spoilers, this video is going to contain spoilers, but I'll warn you before I get to them so you can turn the video off and then come back later once you have read the book. Okay, first of all, my overall score for this book is 6.5 out of 10. And this is a rare occasion where my score of the book actually does not reflect my overall enjoyment of the book, because I actually really did like this book. It was a fun read, it was a fast read, I liked all of the new characters that we got to meet, and I thought meeting some of the old characters, minor characters from the original trilogy, I really enjoyed those characterizations, characters that we basically did not get to know them on a personal level, even in the old Expanded Universe, really. For the most part, I would say Moving Target did feel very Star Wars. It did fall off in a couple of scenes and a couple of chapters, and I will get to that here in just a moment. And the prologue and the epilogue were absolutely amazing. I would recommend reading the book just for those two things. Okay, here's where the spoilers are going to start, so if you want to avoid those, go ahead and turn the video off now and come back later. Okay, one of the overall themes of the book is Princess Leia, how she handles just the sheer weight of being kind of the face of the rebellion and people who are, you know, basically assigned to protect her, giving their lives to do so. And it's just one of those recurring things that keeps happening. It's something that she has to deal with emotionally, constantly. And finally, we actually get to see that. And I'm pretty sure it's the first time we've ever gotten to see that. And I thought it was really interesting. Now, the novel takes place between episodes 5 and 6. So Han is still frozen in carbonite at Jabba's palace. He's not been rescued yet. Chewbacca and Lando, they're still trying to figure things out and infiltrate the palace. And they don't really have a plan set yet to rescue Han. What they do have is now the knowledge of the second Death Star. And they've decided, the Rebellion has decided to start massing their fleets at Sullust. But they don't want to draw too much attention to themselves because then the Empire can come out and attack them before, you know, the battle even gets started. So in order to prevent that from happening, Leia devises a plan to make kind of a distraction on the other side of the galaxy to draw the Empire that direction and away from Sullust. Which, in Return of the Jedi, we find out really didn't work that well because Vader asks the Emperor, what about the rumors of the Rebel fleet massing at Sullust? And the Emperor's like, ah, forget about it, it's fine. So they know about it, they just don't care. But Leia's plan to draw attention away from Sullust. That brings me to Operation Yellow Moon, which is another kind of moral quandary for Princess Leia in this book. Because what she's doing is she's drawing the Empire's attention to all these small little planets on the opposite side of the galaxy, and people get hurt because of it. She has to keep reminding herself that this is for the greater good. One of the things I really enjoyed about this novel is the Rebellion doesn't come off as totally squeaky clean. And I thought that was really interesting. Like, they've done some shady things, too. Okay, moving on to some new characters who we get to meet for the very first time in this episode, or in this episode, in this novel. <laughs> first of all, we meet Loke Marka. At least I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's L-O-K-M-A-R-C-H-A. -A. Loke Marsha, Loke Marcha, Loke Marka. I was pronouncing it Loke Marka the entire time. And he is a Delisian commando, and he is a straight-up badass. I absolutely loved his character. And if you've read, if, if you're watching this part of the video, you've read the book, and this spoiler, you know, should not be a surprise to you, when he sacrificed himself for the rest of the crew to escape that, that Star Destroyer, that really pulled at my heartstrings because he had developed a romance with my second favorite character from the novel, aside from Princess Leia, Kitty. Now, Kitty is a really interesting character because she is a Syrian. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, it's C-E-R-E-A-N. And her name is Kiti, and if you remember the prequels, there was Kiati Mundi, who was a Syrian. So Kiti, Kiati Mundi, maybe they're related. At least that's where my mind went when I saw her name and I read what race she was. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's an ancestor or it's a, it's a niece or something of Kiati Mundi. That's awesome! And then there was Antro. Again, I'm just guessing on how to pronounce this name. It's A N T. R-O-T. I'm assuming that second T is silent, so Antro, Antro, something like that. And he was a pretty interesting character, kind of a whiner, a little bit of annoying, but he went out like a champ and kind of saved the day for everybody else. 
So there was a lot to like about this novel, but there were a few things that were a little irritating that kind of pulled me out of the narrative a little bit. Beginning in chapter 13, that's when the, the book kind of took a downhill slide for me. Leia's crew, they land on a planet called Sessid, which is kind of a, it's a touristy type planet. So they land, and Neen Num, who, oh, he was in Return of the, that's one of the characters I was talking about who I really enjoyed getting to know personally, because we got no personality from him in Return of the Jedi, really, and nothing in the little bit he appeared in the Expanded Universe. So getting him featured heavily in this book was really cool. I enjoy getting to know uh, Neen Num a little bit. They get to this tourist planet, and they totally don't look like tourists. So Neen, he's like, look, you guys, you stick out like a sore thumb over here. We gotta get you, you know, looking like you belong here. So they go to a market, and they buy, they actually, it says the word t-shirts. And I'm like, oh, come on. There are no t-shirts in a galaxy far, far away. So the, the description of all of their clothing that they bought at that market, it just it it took me out of the narrative. It felt too earthy. Another thing that pulled me out of the narrative was, I think it was the last planet they had to plant the beacons on. They planted the beacon on a communication tower, on a comm tower. And they had mentioned the very first beacon they, they planted, they planted underground in this series of tunnels and stuff because they wanted to make it more difficult for the Empire to find it. Well, it, it, could you make it any easier to find than putting it on top of a tower? So just just the, the inconsistency there, that really threw me out of the narrative. And then the very end of the book, they escape the Star Destroyer on the shuttle Tiderium from Return of the Jedi. And Tiderium's always been a, a sticking point for me in Return of the Jedi because it's a bit of a plot hole because the Empire would know if a shuttle was stolen. You know, they, somebody would have reported it, you would think, unless they were broadcasting the ID of another shuttle that wasn't stolen. So if they had stolen the idea of one shuttle and then stole an actual other shuttle and then used those in conjunction with each other, that, that's how, you know, just intellectually I got past that part of Return of the Jedi. But now, since they've actually stolen the Tiderium from a Death Star that exploded, the fact that that didn't raise a flag in Return of the Jedi, it now is a giant plot hole. Which, of course, Return of the Jedi was 30 years ago, and this book is brand new, but that should have been called to somebody's attention before this hit print. And all those reasons are why I knocked my score of the book down so low. But again, it was a very enjoyable read. It had, it had major flaws, but overall it was fun. And that's the main thing, especially with a Star Wars book. I mean, you can read, you know, for intellectual enlightenment. You can read for literary enjoyment. Or you can read for fun. And that's what Star Wars books are supposed to be. They're supposed to be fun. And this was a very, very fun read. Okay, that is it for this review. If I missed anything, if there was something you think I should have talked about that I didn't, let's do that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, and I certainly hope you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.